Hepatitis C is a deadly disease that affects about 3.2 million people in the U.S. alone. It is a virus that is spread by contact with contaminated bodily fluids, mainly blood. Most commonly, the disease is spread by the sharing of needles, whether it be IV drug use or getting tattoos or piercings with contaminated instruments. Hepatitis literally means inflammation of the liver, and the C is the specific strain. Many people go years without even knowing that they have the disease because symptoms don't usually present themselves, and doctors don't normally order liver tests because they're not part of a regular physical. When I chose this topic out of the basket, I was pretty sure that I wanted to introduce you guys to my Uncle Mike, but I wasn't absolutely sure if I wanted to do that because I didn't want anybody to judge him based on his medical diagnoses. After I had some discussion with my parents and my brother, I decided that I was going to introduce you guys to him um, because I know what a great person that he actually is. As you can tell, he's pretty much covered in tattoos, but not only tattoos, prison tattoos. Uncle Mike also has a history of IV drug use. He is here with me today to tell us a little bit more about the disease. What a better person to learn from than somebody who's actually had it. So this is Uncle Mike. And first we'll talk about some etiology. The hepatitis C virus is from the virus family Flaviviridae. It is a positive sense single-stranded RNA. It is 30 to 60 nanometers in diameter with a nucleocapsid that houses core protein and viral genomic RNA. This is enveloped by a bilayer of two glycoproteins. So hep C is spread by contact with blood and bodily fluids, like we said earlier. So IV drug use, tattoos with dirty instruments, cocaine straws. It's pretty rare in heterosexual couples, affecting only about 4% of these couples. It's more common with homosexuals due to anal sex practices, but it's most common by IV drug use. It's an estimated 89% of IV drug users get the disease within one year of using. So do you think that you got it from your IV drugs or your prison tattoos or the women? I'm pretty sure that I got hepatitis C from IV drug use. I can remember when my I went to the bathroom and my urine was like an orange color and my fingernails were like getting white around the edges and stuff. And you were sharing needles? No, I didn't share needles. What we did was share the cooker. We, uh, you cook up heroin and uh, say two people, you know, are drawing out of the same one and maybe I think that one of the people that I was with one day had uh, blood, had a dirty needle, and the blood was in the cooker, and when I drew mine out, I'm pretty sure that's how I got it. And how about in prison? Do you think that the instruments you used weren't clean, it, or? It was a possibility that I got it from prison tattoos, uh, but I really think it came from the IV drug use. In prison, they tested me for hepatitis C in 2007 and I tested positive. I was supposed to start. Uh, so did you know you had it before that or that was the time you I was it? pretty sure I had it. And then when they said they would like to test me for it, I didn't have any problem with it because uh, free medical help. <laughs> <laughs> and I figured it'd be you know, at least nice to know. And I was pretty scared because when you get the hepatitis, when they test you for that, they also test you for HIV. And I wasn't worried about the uh, hepatitis. Hepatitis. I was worried about the HIV. <laughs> <laughs> hepatitis C attacks the liver, hep meaning liver, and itis meaning inflammation. It can cause liver cirrhosis, liver cancer, and death. Hepatitis C affects human livers as well as chimpanzee livers. There are no non-living reservoirs identified. So there are two stages of hepatitis C, um, versus the acute stage and then the chronic. The acute stage is the first six months of the disease, and 80% of infected indiv individuals don't have any symptoms in this stage. If they do, they're mild, with like fatigue, abdominal soreness around your liver, 
nausea, loss of appetite, joint pain, and dark urine, which you mentioned you had. In the chronic stage, um, many people don't even have symptoms then until it's too late. It's 20 years down the road and they finally realize that something's going on. Um, at that point, you may have jaundice, fevers, abdominal fluid retention with swelling, obviously liver damage, and even some neurological issues like hallucinations and confusion. Um, hepatitis C is known to target hepatocytes and B lymphocytes, um, which are white blood cells that secrete antibodies. So you said that you had dark urine. Any other symptoms that you had when you when they around were around my fingernails? Right. And but the urine was so dark that. This one time in my whole life, I didn't lift the toilet seat when I used it. It actually stained the toilet seat orange, and we couldn't get it out. It was it was crazy. <laughs> right now, Uncle Mike is technically hepatitis C free, I and mean. we'll get to how he got there in just a little bit. But um, you, <laughs> do you have any symptoms now at all? Anything? Nope. No liver discomfort. Do you have liver cirrhosis? I never experienced any liver discomfort and I, anyway. So the reason people go so long with the disease without knowing they have it is because doctors don't normally test for it in routine blood work. So when you go for your annual physical, they'll send you for CBC, CMP, but they're not going to actually test your liver levels. Um, unless they think something's wrong. And most of the time you don't have symptoms, so you don't think anything's wrong. So a lot of times people go a long time and they just don't know. Um, so if it is detected from a liver test, if the HCV antibodies are detected, then a second and third test are done to determine if the person is currently infected, and if so, the specific genotype and its genetic makeup. So specific liver enzyme tests can help determine treatment options. And in severe cases, liver biopsies can be done to help determine specific staging and to help the patient um, and where, really where to go from there. That was, when they take a needle and stick it in between your ribs and to get the thing, and it feels like an electric shock. It was crazy. You're smiling. Was it fun? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got one of those things at the house now. We use it <laughs> oh, at it, night time. <laughs> no. But it was painful? It, it wasn't. It felt like an electric shock going through. And there's a possibility of you bleeding out, so you have to stay at the hospital for a whole day. Some guys actually, they start bleeding and they can't get it stopped. They have to open them up and uh, mm. do surgery. So I was lucky there. And... Uh, then uh, a few months later, I was informed that I did have it. And then to talk to, they brought me to talk to a doctor about treatment, uh, what my options were at that time. So there's a weekly injection that hepatitis C patients get, which aids, in, aids the immune system in fighting viruses and it also defends healthy liver cells. There's also a pill, ribavirin, which fights viruses, um, it, but, but it will not work against the hepatitis unless you have the injection, injection to go along with it. Sometimes a third pill is introduced in severely ill patients. Um, and it's an additional antiviral drug that helps stop the virus from invading host cells and replicating. So it's, it can be up to $87,000 monthly just for one pill. The ribavirin, the pill, is so expensive that the guards come get you from your cell and walk you up to medication every 12 hours. You have to take one pill every 12 hours. They did it at the prison I was in at 10 o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock at night. But I also got the injection every Friday. A guard would take me up and got the injection. And the one doctor said that the injection was a thousand dollars a week just for the needle and I was told that it was around a hundred thousand dollars for my treatment plan um, which was the ribavirin interferon but the side effects of those two was terrible I lost 60 pounds in two months 
I had diarrhea continuously. If I put something in my mouth, I better be sitting down because it was coming right back out. Um, that's, it, it's crazy. And thank goodness you had the prison to help pay for it. Right. I'd have never been able to afford it. Um, and they, uh, took me off of it because my body wasn't reacting to it. There was no reaction there for two months. So after two months of going to the bathroom all the time and losing all that weight and being miserable, I mean, I was actually physically sick and weak. The, the medication did not agree with my body at all. So I thought that it was just hopeless. And then I got out of prison and I went to a doctor and she told me when she looked over my charts and everything, we talked about it and she said there was a new drug called Harmony and I was on medical assistance because just coming out of prison, they give you the medical assistance for a year and uh, she said that I'd be a fool not to try it and take advantage of it. So I went to gastroenterologist and she got my records, my prison records, because I did not want to get another biopsy. And they did these drug, these blood culture things to grow something. They just took a whole lot of blood and did that instead. And then they started me on the Harvoni. And that pill, I was told, was around $800 a pill. And you take one pill, one time a day, after the two months I went and had blood work taken, I was uh, told that I was negative, the results were negative, no, non-detected, hepatitis C was non-detected at that time. Went back and got it tested again in November, and I have one more time to get tested, and then I don't have to get tested anymore. But. After the, the after this last time, they're pretty sure that I, it'll never occur as long as I don't return to my previous lifestyle. So you are hepatitis C free as of right now. As of right now, I'm hepatitis C free, I'm drug free, I'm alcohol free, and I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well now Uncle Mike is going back to school, trying to better himself, better his life. Wants to become a drug counselor, actually, to tell kids not to do drugs like he did and get hepatitis C. Um, we wanted to direct this interview to my class, all the girls in microbiology, just because a lot of you are going into healthcare, like me, and Uncle Mike thinks it's really important that we all know the risks of working with patients um, who sometimes have hep C or HIV and don't let you know these things. Every time, when once I was aware of the fact that I had hepatitis C, every time I came in contact with a healthcare worker, I made them aware that I was infected with the disease. A lot of people aren't that forthcoming. You young ladies are going into this profession. Some of you will be handling needles and instruments and starting IVs. Right, starting IVs. Uh, There's it, no room for error, basically. Right, because everybody's not going to say, "Hey." I might have hepatitis C, and I'd hate for anybody to have to go through the medication and have the side effects that I had, or possibly go the rest of your life and not even know, and then, you know, 60, 70 years old, when you're getting ready to retire, you puke your liver up, and there goes retirement plans. <laughs> you have to treat everybody as if they were infected, because not everybody is forthcoming, like you said. So, we hope you guys learned something, and this is my Uncle Mike. Phone number? <laughs> <No>. <laughs>